Okay, welcome going. This is uh, the release stream or the launch stream for Panzer Corps 2. So welcome. My name is Daz Tactic. I'll sort of be taking you through this uh, two hour session. I thought we'd actually do something a bit different this time. I'm going to start a new campaign because I guess this is probably the video that people will sort of look at uh, more in, in retrospect uh, rather than sort of... Uh, uh, you know, like they'll use this one to sort of try to evaluate whether they want to sort of buy the game, I would, would imagine. So I thought I'd actually just go through. If anyone does have any questions in the chat, please uh, sing out. I'll do my best to sort of look across, but I can't promise anything. So hi, guys, and welcome. Uh, I thought we'd just do a bit of an overview as to what you get with the game and then sort of uh, get into a, a different campaign. The, uh, the campaign I was running with did load into this one, but it's a bit problematic. So I thought I'd actually, just for safety's sake, start, uh, start with something fresh because I have been using beta versions of the game up until now. This is version 1.04. The game was released an hour ago, so uh, if you've got the game, then probably go and play it rather than watch this. <laughs> it's awesome. It's an awesome, awesome game. It really is incredibly good. Uh, still a few little things I think that they, you know could be looked at, but it, but really this is going to be just such a great series, I think, that will come out once the DLCs and stuff come out for this as well. Anyway, we'll just go across. We'll go through the different bits and pieces you do get with the game. So with the new game, you've got the tutorial, which is fairly short, but actually it's really informational, so very, very good one to do. You've got a heap of campaigns. Now, initially, you've got just the Wormac campaigns, but there's a lot of content in here. Uh, like each of these campaigns have got like branching areas as well like if we click on I'm going to I'm going to start playing North Africa now if you were watching any of my previous streams or the last one we did try North Africa but it did crash but that was a beta version of the game so fingers crossed I think we'll uh, get through that one but you can see there it's got the campaign length is either 14 to 17 scenarios depending on what happens so it does actually have these branching campaigns which is really quite cool uh, yep so uh, so Byron is saying the game's out super excited yes it is it's uh, Really, really cool. It's funny actually. I was before I started streaming, I went across to Steam to have a look and look at the comments because these are, these are really quite interesting days when you actually have a, a launch or a release. Um, it's quite fun to sort of see the excitement build uh, just before the game actually does come out. It must be very, very nerve wracking for the devs, I would imagine. Anyway, that's the uh, so that the campaigns. There's a lot, lot of content in there. Uh, scenarios, you don't have a hell of a lot of scenarios, but I think the idea is, is that the editor is so easy to use, there'll end up being a lot of content available for the game. And so if it's anything like Panzer Core itself, like Panzer Core 1, there'll be just heaps and heaps and heaps of community uh, scenarios if, if for anyone that does want to sort of play those. So it doesn't have a hell of a lot to start with uh, in that capacity. But it's uh, got this random scenario generator, which is really, really awesome. Like the actual, the, the maps it does create are really quite good. Uh, so there's, um, you've got five that you can actually choose from in here. There is actually a sixth version, which is an islands one. I keep on saying this whenever I do a stream because it used to be in here in the early beta, but it's no longer in here. I guess it's just a bit too complex for the AI to manage the, um, like the, the invasions across the water. So uh, anyway, this is, uh, but this is very, very good, the way this one does work and the way it actually builds the maps as well. It, every single random map that I've seen has got lots of choke points. It's got lots of river crossings. It's really, really quite interesting. So anyway, you just pick whatever you want there. Map size, you've got like a whole range of different things and through this side, uh, you've got different sort of missions like free for all, survival, attack or defense. Uh, so survival is basically where you've just got to last as long as you possibly can against waves of, uh, of enemies. Attack is that you're actually assaulting a, a, um, a dug-in region and defense is the opposite where you've actually dug in and they're coming for you. Now, so that's where that is. Number of players, you can have up to eight players playing in a game as well. So you've got like a hell of a lot of uh, options there for, um, for, the, uh, for, the, for the actual number of players that can then play. And then the players faction, uh, you've got like Germany, USA, Great Britain, USSR and Italy. So they're the actual playable factions that you can actually sort of play in through there as well. So even though, if we just go back to the menu, even though the um, the rand, sorry, the campaign is only Wehrmacht, it, you can actually play any of those other ones. If you just go back back there again, um, you can play as any of those any of those different sorts of factions. So you do have advanced options now. Some of these don't quite work properly because these are the advanced options also for the campaigns, and so certain things don't quite work. Like custom army doesn't really work 
from what I can tell anyway, in the random maps. But it's um, still you can still actually sort of set things up. A lot of the a lot of the little bits and pieces, like for example, the race against time. We got re like reduced uh, reduced times, etc. Or David versus Goliath, where all the enemies get another plus five strength. You can certainly change things around to sort of suit your play style, which is really quite cool. Um, for uh, so, <laughs> it's KD Moose is saying, Daz, you're responsible for much of the uh, hype with your enjoyable and entertaining stream. So great to see it uh, finally out in the wild. Yeah, thanks for that. It's uh, it is a fun, fun game. Hi, Cushion Gaming, and hi, everybody else that's come in. Uh, so welcome. Uh, if you've got any questions, as I say, maybe if I do start to miss comments, just put an at Daz Tactic, and I'll try to address anything that's sort of asked. Uh, the Heroes also doesn't seem to sort of really work, from what I can tell, with the random maps as well, which is a, sh a shame that that would be cool if that actually did work, where you sort of had them straight from the start. But if you can do that, you, no, you can't, because you can't customise your... Your leader, sorry, in the random maps. Anyway, that's the, the random maps are sort of where I'm really, really excited about the game. And, if, and just from a back sort of story part of things, the uh, the random maps, it, like the, to build a random map, they needed to actually completely change the AI to be able to cope with uh, different strategic situations. And so the AI has been built from scratch. And that really is the biggest, biggest change in Panzer Court 2, uh, which is pretty amazing, really, what they've actually done with everything. So they've still made it ca for casual sort of gaming. Like, it's, it's still not a, it's not super complex. The game mechanics are good. And so in that sort of sense, like, you have really good balance with what they've actually done with the actual game mechanics and the, the whole approach to the game. Very immersive as well. Uh, load game, of course, I won't go in there, but uh, multiplayer is quite interesting as well. You do actually have your online mode, your play by email slash online. But you've also got hot seat as well. And so in the hot seat mode, you can see through here, we've got a few other different sorts of um, sorts of, of maps that we can then sort of play. So there's a whole range of different sorts of ways of playing this. Uh, you've even got co-op, actually. I don't know what this one is. I haven't, I haven't actually played with these. <laughs> and you can still set up a random, like a hot seat game or a random game with a random scenario. So you can actually play that way as well. So there's some really nice stuff to sort of uh, see what you've actually got through here. It's uh, very, very good. Anyway, uh, we'll just get back out of there, back to the menu. Uh, the editor is really easy to use, I've got to say, as well. So um, I'll probably end up doing a tutorial on that on my YouTube channel at some stage, I think. I might just let it sort of let the game sort of um, just iron out any bugs that it sort of comes with with release and then sort of do something. But that's a very very good uh, editor, v very simple to use, and you can actually generate a map very very quickly in that one and, and have it quite playable and just sort of rip into your own sort of maps. That's why there's going to be a lot of content that'll come from the community. Uh, other it's just got other sorts of things like for example the the options, the manual, the forum. Um, actually, the forum was fun to sort of, as I said before, just sort of watching the uh, the, the pre-launch excitement. It's uh, quite funny how uh, different people really, really want their games, want their games now. I want it now. Okay. Anyway, let's just get into it. I'm, I'm going to start playing. I'm going to go to the North Africa campaign. We'll just sort of kick off from there, and I'll just go through, try to sort of explain a few of the, um, the little bits and pieces about what each of the different sorts of units do. Again, the class of units is actually the most important thing. Uh, I'll, I'll explain that as we get into it. Anyway, let's just go and play this one. I've got advanced options, actually. I'll just quickly go and have a look. These are exactly the same as for the random maps, which is where I'm thinking that these do work for uh, for this particular game. So we'll definitely play with customer, sorry, commander customization, which is really quite a, an interesting way to play. The, the combat randomness is, uh, if I put it down to zero, this is your RNG uh, aspect. So it'll say there, using this slide, you can adjust the combat randomness to your taste. So 100% real result uh, determined by game combat rules and formulas, or zero combat uh, result is always is predicted. So because the game tries to sort of figure out what what you know like what the likely damage is, is to be with a particular particular attack, by putting it down to zero, we would then end up with it being so that it always comes up with what's predicted. And if we go up to this way, it's going to be completely random. So, well, not completely random, but it's going to be fairly random. I'll keep it in the middle, which sort of just gives us a bit of a balance. Uh, undo modes. I'll go with um, undo... I'll do... Yeah, I'll do any action. That's fine. Undo uses. It's got three per turn is now the... Um, is now the actual limit. Uh, three per turn. I shall go with that one. I'll keep that one where that is. Three per turn. Uh, yeah, okay. We'll do it. <laughs> if that's the default, that's the default. <laughs> Okay, so 79 is saying, do I get a discount if I stay till the end of the stream? <laughs> no. 
Uh, the weather is, is a really cool system as well. Supply is, is um, of course, very simple in this game, but works very, very well. So you can sort of use that to your advantage. In fact, this, of all the supply systems, I mean, quite often with war games, the supply system is often how the game is sort of won and lost. Uh, and, but they're really quite complex and sort of work as a veneer under everything. In this case, it's actually very simple to work out and really only works on a turn-by-turn -turn basis. So really quite cool there. Uh, Fog of War will leave off. Shroud I won't turn on. That's going to hide the whole map. Turn limits. Yep, we'll keep that one on. So you can play with that off if you wanted to. Uh, if you didn't want to bother with the term limits. Heroes I really like. The awards I really like. Iron Man I won't use. So let's just go and get started here. And see what we end up with. Okay, so this is the... This is the um, this is a really cool aspect to the game. So I'm just going to go Daz Von Tactic. Now in the previous sort of series that we've been playing, I just clicked on Randomize and I ended up getting a really bad one, which was poor maintenance. Due to breakdowns, units randomly lose move points and attack actions at the beginning of each turn. And that really, really screwed us over. <laughs> but you can see through this one, like this one would be really bad as well because we've ended up with so many different negatives. Like we can't have artillery, we can't have an air force. <laughs> that gets rid of that aspect for us. Inept logistics, so uh, nine, minus 10% core slots. This would be a terrible one to go with. So you've got your negatives through here, which gives you extra points to sort of spend. I won't do random. <laughs> I learned from last time. We're not going to do that at all. Uh, so what are we going to do now? These do hurt you. Like when you actually do take these, they really do hurt you. So um, Green Army, Elite Replacements are limited to three times per mission. Um, I, no, I, I, don't, I really don't want to get, go with that one. There's not really much in here that I'd be wanting to do. Can I use replacements in the middle of battle? Um, that may be one that may be worth getting. Inefficient Supply. Get reduced supply at the beginning of their turn. That's um, as long as you're not going to get surrounded, that would be okay. So you just get reduced supply at the beginning of their turn. Let's just go and grab that one. So inefficient supply. So that gives us three to select from over this other side. Now, rather than spend too much time with this one, deep recon. So map around all. Yeah, that's uh, that's cost. It's going to give us one operational initiative. Uh, Master of the Blitzkrieg. All tanks get plus one movement points and cross mine rivers easier. That's only one point. That's that's not too bad. 25 experience uh, growth rate, that would be good as well. Auxiliary force, <clears throat> trophies of war. Actually, one thing I will want to get, is I think I'll go with, starts the game with three additional heroes. I'll do that one just so we can show the heroes off. And industry connections, gets 15 to 20 random prototypes in every mission. Let's go with that one. We're not going to get it in the first one, but we'll just use that as, the, as what we're going to go with for our actual commander. So I would strongly advise, don't click on randomize. <laughs> <laughs> it can really cause a lot of problems uh, with your actual game, as you saw there, with not having any artillery or air force, that would have been horrifically bad. Okay, so we'll accept that. No matter what the benefits over here would have been, that would have just been terrible. So we'll accept that oh. one. At the end of your extended leave in Germany, you've decided to come join us in Africa, have you? Well, Head General, I hope you scrape the rust off your pants and are ready for action once again. Our Italian friends are in trouble and we're moving in to assist. A fellow veteran of your campaign in France, newly promoted General Lieutenant Rommel, has some intriguing ideas I want to share with you. Rather than just hold the line here, Rommel has suggested a reconnaissance in force. To probe the state of the British forces, yeah? Right. Start here, make contact with the leading British elements and see just how strong or weak their grip on the desert really is. Should you only encounter limited enemy resistance, perhaps a detour to Benghazi would not be out of the question. Be warned that the African desert is a wide open and hostile place, offering little cover outside of scattered towns and villages clustered around the occasional oasis. So plan your forces accordingly. Depending on the strength of resistance you encounter, I'd like to see if you can scout all the way to the outskirts of Tobruk, here and here. Once your mission is completed, report back to me directly. I will handle any objections from Italian Commando Supremo. But the more successful your recon mission, the easier that will be for me. Do make my life easy for once, Herr General. Dismissed.
Hope that was loud enough, guys. Anyway, that's the uh, the briefing. We'll end the briefing there. Uh, now we had a, um, a comment there. Say seventy nine was saying, "Let us choose." Uh, no, it's too it would t- take too long. I think. <laughs> uh, what does combat initiative do? Combat initiative is sort of like when you actually have an attack. Typically, they both attack and defend at the same time, and combat initiative will give you a slight advantage. Like to, uh, I think that's how it would work, where you end up getting an attack. It will then take damage and then come back, like it will then uh, attack back with less. I think that's sort of how that does work. Okay, so uh, let's get into this. We've got um, we've got three different uh, guys. So we've got uh, Klaus Schultz. He's got crippling blows, so plus five attack against full strength units. All right, so we have to figure out where we're going to be positioning these three heroes. So that's one. That's the first hero. These, so these are going to be random. I love this. God, it's so good. Uh, consolidator. So this guy here can consolidate more than normal strength into a single unit, thus increasing maximum over strength, which um, which unit can have by plus five. So that means that if we've got like a typical tank unit, uh, when we over, give it over strength, we can take it up to 15 strength. By putting uh, Gerald Wolf into that particular group, we can then get it up to 20 strength if we wanted to. That's a, as an example. So tank units would be a good one. Or maybe even aircraft would be a good one for us to sort of use in that with with him. Uh, and then we we'll go go across, and we've got camouflage. So Marcus Richter. So uh, can only be detected by recons or adjacent ground units. Oh, okay, all right. That's not that that good actually. <laughs> I sort of wish I had something a bit different. <laughs> in the other game that I was playing, I ended up with some really powerful uh, heroes that we could sort of place into different things. Can only be detected by recons and adjacent ground units. Hmm. Um, I'll have to think about where I, where I put them. We'll have a bit of a look at our forces. So these are our forces back over through here. We've got uh, Bersic Larry, so these are going to be the Italian allies. We've got Grenadiers, Italian infantry back in through there as well. Pioneer unit, that's cool. Via infantry, two wear infantry is back in through that side. We've got 1,300 to spend, and we have, uh, what's that, eight points to, to, um, to use. So free core slots are eight. You'll notice there's a whole lot of other things that weren't in the previous versions that we were playing as well. Like we've now got things like the um, the air mode where we can actually isolate just the aircraft, which I really like as well. So there's a whole lot of little things, even the strategic mode. And have a quick look at the uh, from a top-down view, just to sort of get a bit of a feel for what's actually going on with the um, with the strategy, which is really quite cool. Um, now we've got the we've got uh, yeah, so that's our that's our infantry. We've got our tanks in through this side. So we've got uh, L3s, which would be Italians, I guess. Uh, we've got the Panzer IIs, Panzer IIs in through there. One Panzer IV. So we've got three Panzer IIs. They're all Gs. We've got a Panzer II here. Um, I'm thinking I will... And these are actually already coming in with a fair bit of experience. We've got only one recon. So one armoured car is not really all that good. The uh, anti-tank, we've got uh, the Panzer Jaeger 1B. So um, that's the only anti-tank that we have. Only got the one of those. Not sure if we'll need more of those or not. We do actually have the uh, 10 centimeters, a 15 centimeter, a Stug 3, and a uh, Sturm Panzer 1. Uh, so that's going to be our artillery. The anti-aircraft, we actually do have 88s. Excellent. We've got one of those. That's going to be really cool as well. And they do actually have their own uh, transport. So they're coming with transport, as are the other artillery. That's going to be very important for us. We've got two BF-109s. We've got um, a, a, um, a BF-110. Uh, one, one, uh, like We've got a, um, a, a Stuka there as well. Now, we also have a Heinkel strategic bomber. So what are we missing? What are we missing? I would like to get another recon. Uh, just so we can actually flesh that out. That'll be really important. I would like to get more infantry as well. Uh, the anti-tank, without knowing what we're going to be facing, I don't think I'll bother too much with that. And I wouldn't mind getting another aircraft if we can as well. So that's a definitely a recon. We've got one Pioneer already. Yeah, let's just go to the purchase screen and just see what we can actually buy. And so these are the different classes. They all do different sorts of things. Now, the, the infantry is vitally important. If we had a lot of bridges, we'd be wanting to get a bridge pioneer. They only take up one slot, so they're not sort of too bad. Everything else is three slots. Even like the cavalry is, is you know, can be quite useful. Uh, they have different sorts of things, which we'll talk about when we get into the game. The pioneer is great because of the extra bonuses that it can actually have. Like it's got, if, we, um, if I click on this one, you'll see that it actually has got like military engineer, 
So he ignores enemy entrenchment. Um, actually, that's worth four. Ooh, that's half the spots that we have left. I might come back and have a look at this. I wouldn't mind getting another one of these. Close combat, minesweeper, um, bunker killer, and entrenchment support. It's They're so, so useful. So useful. Um, but And if I go with an armored transport for this guy, that's going to be five slots. We only have three left over. Let's not worry about that one. Now, as far as the panzers are concerned, we do have one of these, these Panzer IIs, and I do want to evaluate this in terms of the others. So if I hover over, for example, a Panzer 3G, which is what we've got everywhere else, it's 250, actually, we'll just go to a Panzer 3H. It does um, a, a bit, like a lot more against tanks to go from a 2 to a 3. It's still not bad. This guy's still not bad against infantry, so the soft attack is not sort of super bad either. It doesn't have much protection when we sort of look at this in comparison. But everything else is not too bad. So I think I'll just leave the Panzer II. I'll leave that one where that actually is. So we won't worry about getting any more tanks. Now Recon, I just want to get another one of these. It's going to be three. I could grab myself a, um, uh, uh, like this one here, an, um, an armoured car, like one of the earlier armoured cars. If I just hover over that one, you'll see that this one does more damage. Over the course of the game, this is going to be much more important for me. Hmm. I think I'm going to invest in one of these. So let's just go and add that to the basket. So we've got that one there. So total cost is now three and one seventy. The, the actual money isn't going to isn't going to be a worry here at all. Anti tank. Now we've already got the Panzer Jaeger one B. Uh, don't think I'll worry about that one. Anti air. We've got one of the 88s, that hopefully will be enough. Hopefully will be enough, they're very expensive. And then if we get the transport, actually, yeah, by the time you put the transport on, I mean, we could afford it. Artillery we're doing pretty well with, so we don't need to really worry too much about that. I might even upgrade something, potentially. We'll have a look at that in just a minute. Now the uh, the Messerschmitts, we've got the Messerschmitt BF-109 back in through this side. I could either I could either go with one of those or another Stuka. Let's get one of these uh, Junkers Stukas. That's it. You mess with Smith BF one one zero. These are so good at destroying armor on the ground, and then these are good at sort of uh, whittling away at other forces. These are only worth two. These are three. These are only the, the Storch is like a it's literally just a scout plane. So I won't worry about that one. It's only it's only cost fifty. I mean, it does leave, it's only cost one slot. Hmm. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll leave it. I think. God, which way are we going to go here? Um, yeah, actually, um, Mac Macaroni is saying that uh, recon plane. Uh, I think with getting the other recon unit, I don't think I'm going to need the sto the storage. I'm tempted to just go and get another Stuka or another Messerschmitt. I think I'll I think I'll just get make sure I've actually really got air support. We'll add that to the basket as well. We've now got two points left. And I don't think there was anything that I really needed to upgrade as far as the artillery was concerned. Um yeah, the Stern Panzer is worth uh, four. This one's worth six. Wow, that's a lot. I'll go with more uh, more infantry back through here. So I can't afford this guy. Um, yeah, we've got six. We've only got two left. Actually, I can't get any of those. I can't get any of those. Right, like, let's just leave it like where it is. We'll just uh, purchase those. Done. We may upgrade a few of the other units. So we'll see what we can actually upgrade as well. So if we go back into here and have a look, for example, we've got Weir Infantry back through there, Pioneer Unit. I don't think I can actually upgrade these. No, I can't upgrade those. The Grenadier I can upgrade. I uh, probably don't want to upgrade him. Maybe just these rear infantry. Do some upgrades. Let's get ourselves another Pioneer. So Vermect Infantry uh, with the... It's got Opal. I'm going to change that one across. That will then take me up to the full limit. We'll get this transport with, with Pioneer units. So let's do the upgrade. All right, we're now at the limits of what we can actually have with our core slots. Um, that gives us just one more of their infantry back down through this side. Now, as far as the heroes are concerned, who are we going to put heroes on? 
Uh, the recons that we had, now look, I'll just go and deploy these other units so I can just pop the aircraft back in through there. Uh, what I can do is I'm probably going to be wanting to have, just having a look at the, bit, at the layout that we actually have through here, it's not too bad, but I think we might just get rid of one of those. We'll pop the recon unit back into there and just move the, um, the via infantry back that way. So that then just gets our forces sort of uh, arrayed on the on the map. Is there anything else we wanted to sort of move around? Probably not. And so now we just need to get our heroes involved. So to put the heroes in, um, now as far as being spotted, as far as being spotted, who should we give the... Um, I'll give it to... This one doesn't have any experience, so this would be the one to um, to give it a, um, a hero back in through here. So we're going to assign a hero to this one. So we've got Crippling Blow, plus five attack against full strength units. Consolidator can uh, consolidate more than normal strength into a single unit, thus increasing maximum strength, which uh, which I will do that. I've got a lot to spend, and I think I'll do that with one of the, my Panzer threes. Uh, and then we've got Camouflage. can only be detected by recons or adjacent ground units. Let's give Marcus to this unit, I think. So you, he can be assigned there. We can put more than one in, into each of the actual things if we wanted to. So that's the, that one there. If we go across now to the uh, to one of the tanks, Panzer three Gs. Let's make it this one here. Let's assign our. Let's assign our. Um, so this one's now been assigned. We've got the consolidator, so we could actually get this one to to full over strength, and crippling blow, blow, plus five attack against full strength units. Let's go with that as well. So we'll make this into a super tank. All right, so there we go. Now this is uh, what, just so we can actually spot it, let's go and change the look of this particular tank. So we've got the default one that we're actually using at the moment is just the German Africa Corps default. I can go and pick anything, so I can make it look a bit different than the others. I can have it just go back to being what one of the, like that's the winter, the winter coats uh, back in through this side. We can get some of these are quite cool actually. Like you'll see that there's, I want it to look fairly different. Um, you've got heaps and heaps to to, uh, to choose from. It's Japanese winter. <laughs> I mean, it would stand out, wouldn't it, with the yellow? Uh, what else have we got? A lot of these are going to be fairly subtle. Turkish. Um, no, that's too much. Too much like the other Africa core. Yugoslavian. They, we get a bit of a red colour in there. I, I don't mind that. What about South African? No, this is not going to stand out enough. I like this. That way we know it's the super tank. And we might as well do the same with this one as well. Let's just go and change the camouflage just so we know that that's our sort of like our super, um, our sneaky one. In fact, is there another one that would be better suited for that? Maybe we'll just go back to grey. Just go back up to the top here. Just to the default, just so we know that that's actually going to be our sneak one through there. Um, so that's that one. And we've also got Insignia, which you can hardly see it. It's just on the side, but you can actually change that as well. I was seeing if you could actually upload your own, but I don't think it's... I think it's a bit more complicated. It looks like it's all part of the... Um, uh, what is it? The um, Like it's actually done through the... Oh, my mind's gone blank. Whatever the engine is, it's sort of... It's coded inside the engine, so it will be able to be modded, but it won't be easily modded. I don't think anyway. And so we'll close that one off. Uh, we've now got our heroes assigned. Everyone is now ready to go. So I think we're now ready to get started. Uh, everything else is... Oh, hang on, no, overstrength, overstrength. Where's our Where's our super tank? There he is. So that's... No, here he is down this way. So we're going to go and... Uh, we're going to go and upgrade this this guy. And we're just going to make it go overstrength. And so we've got an extra 10. Now it's going to cost me 230. Um... Oh, hang on, 20. There we go. 500. So I can get that one up to 20 points. So hang on. No, it's going to cost me even more. Oh, it's going to cost me extra. I didn't bring enough. Oh, no. No. Okay, well, I'm not going to be able to do it this turn until we get more points. <laughs> okay, so no more slots here. Yeah, there we go. All right, so... Um, <laughs> KD Moose is saying, what, no hot pink op option? I'm sure there'll be mods coming with uh, different colour because it will be useful to be able to spot which tanks are your special ones. Now, I'll leave that one... I'm just trying to think. I might even move that one off and swap it over for this one over here. This is another one of our Panzer 3s. 
Let's just go and put this one back in the front. We'll lead off with that one and have that one go in there. All right, so let's get started in deployment, turn one. So now what we can see is we can see certain things. For example, we've got the um, we've got the anti-tank in through here. So uh, that's a quarter pounder, so 26 quarter pounder. If we click on these, we can then just see, just by looking at this, you can see what the class is. The class is very important. If I go to attack this, for example, I'm gonna, it's gonna end up, I think it'll protect that as well. Like it'll actually do more, like it's not a good move for us to go and attack that particular unit. It's got protection from there, but it's also inside a uh, like an actual defensive area. So what we want to do is we do want to go and sort of destroy this. Now we can see through there when I if I go to any of these, we don't do well against the anti tank, but our tanks will still do well against these. So I'm going to go and, t and charge into this one. Um, I would like to try to organise an overrun. If I move this one in as well, I can actually get started with this. I'll just move that one across. This one, if I now bring this one in, you'll see that the number has suddenly gone to different. It's a different number than what we had there before because we're actually getting a support aspect of this one. We end up with recon. Units, uh, units uh, enemy units adjacent to, uh, uh, to recon are attacked by other friendly units with plus 10% accuracy, plus 3% for each of the recon stars. So we've already got two stars there with experience. So that's actually quite cool. We end up with rapid fire with, with this one as well. Camouflage is going to be detected by recons or adjacent ground units. So this is one that we can sort of hide this one anywhere we like. And then phased movement, which is really important for your recons. That's why they're super valuable. So we can almost get the kill here just in one go. Um, I can do five with this one. I can get started just by using that. Um, I can also just use my Stuka as well. God, it's going to be good not having to worry about the... Um, Actually, what I might do is I might actually change my Stukas as well. Let's just go across and um, uh, we've got fighters. I've just got the two tactical bombers. The Stukas, the, actually the two tactical bombers are going to be the ones I'm going to, I'm going to struggle spotting. So we'll just quickly go to the camouflage there as well. Oh, didn't show up. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We've got it now. So um, we're using this one over through this side. If we just go back to greys. That should then sort of show up, up uh, fairly well. Actually, that shows up pretty well, doesn't it? And we'll do the same here. We'll just get our um, get our tactical bombers working that way. I can change all of the uh, like all of the skin, uh, the, uh, apply the skin to everything if I wanted to. Anyway, let's just close that one off. That way we can at least spot it fairly easily in amongst the others, and we might, might even just do it with this one. It's just going to allow us to um, to spot what's going on. Um, I'll just keep that one fairly dark. There we go. So we can sort of that way. I know where my fighters are. I know where my um, uh, where my actual stukas and things actually are. So if I do that when I get a six, I get a four there. I found another one back at the top at the at the end there. So the stuka will do good damage with that one. I don't need much to get the overrun. So we'll just go now across to the um, the one one zero, and uh, we can get four there, three there. I'll start here once again. The recon is giving me extra bonuses. And you'll see there, when I, when I do this, it's now showing recon. So using your recons can be really, really valuable. Now what's happened there is we've actually now reduced it by four, but we also reduced its, um, its uh, suppression by another two, which means it's really only going to defend as if it's only a four. Now I want to get overrun, so I'm going to go through here, and I want to bounce through and grab this one at the back through this side. So I can now kill it off. We can now see that we can get a fairly... Fairly, like we should be able to do the uh, damage here with this particular unit, which will then give us the overrun back to the back to the previous one back through there. So we've now got recon attack uh, helping us again. Done. Now that we killed it, we managed to destroy it, which means that the tank then gets overrun, and I can still keep on rolling forward and do more damage against this one here, for example. But I also still have my recon, which has got phased movement. We still haven't actually fired this one off yet. So I can do five damage here and still get this thing to sort of go back in. So let's now use the recon. Where can that one get to? That one can get to either one of those. We'll probably get another overrun. So let's just move this one across. Oh, there we go. We've actually now found ourselves some artillery. I'm not going to get much more than this with the, uh, with the armoured car. So let's just see if we can actually somehow bounce across with another overrun. 
There we go. We took one damage there, unfortunately. Get two. And if I get the overrun here... Oh, it went back. We didn't get the overrun. So actually, I should have, I should have used the Stuka against that particular force. Okay, so now we've got the Stuka ready to go in. We can now do damage against this. We can do four damage against this one or four against this one. Now, this isn't going to be all that... I'm not going to be too worried about this one. I need to get rid of it. Uh, maybe I'll do that now, actually. Let's just, uh, just destroy that one now. Um, I've got more recons back over this side as well, so that's going to help. That's my, that's my second recon. Which is going to give me more power with the Stuka. So using the combined arms is really important. We're now, now we're now down to five. If I now bring this one across, I can bring in my grenadiers, who are sort of like heavy infantry, and destroy that. Done it. And we didn't lose any damage there at all. That's good. Okay, now we've got this unit, which will come back in, and we'll see that we're starting to now get other other forces. But this is just this is actually is a pioneer unit. Now they bypass all sorts of things, so they're going to be much more powerful. We should put another pioneer there as well. Um, we can start to sort of move in. What I might do is I might soften this one up. So if we if we evaluate what's going on here with the eleventh uh, Great Britain Infantry, we'll sort of see that it's got it's dug in at three at this point in time. So the current entrenchment of three is minus twenty four percent damage from infantry, minus thirty percent damage from vehicles, and minus twelve percent damage from bombardment. So bombardment's not it's we can still bombard fairly effectively. Now, I'll be wanting to bombard with this one, but I'd like to move this one up a little bit as well. Now, I can sort of bypass this one. We can do a lot of damage against this. It's not really going to be able to do anything back again. Uh, let's move this one up to here. Oops, I always right click. It's the left click. Lost one suppression, but not not actually one one unit. So suppression will come back at the end of the round. So we've done that one. I don't think we've got any more overruns. I can bring this one across. We can then remove that one as well, just using the um, the Panzer IV. I don't want to be attacking any like any built up areas with my tanks, only with the infantry. Okay, now we've got overrun. I can attack this one. It may be it may be viable at some other point if I move this one across back into here. I've still got more movement with this because it's phased movement, but this will now give me better attacks with everything. So uh, if I bring my Pioneer in, I can actually do 11 damage now with the Pioneer simply because I've got other units around it. Now we're definitely going to be wanting to do this. So we'll get that one in there, get it ready. It's also now encircled. God, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> Let me explain what's going on because there's so much now with this particular attack. If we do, if we do the attack, you can see there we've got mass attack uh, two times because we've got it sort of surrounded. We've got a recon which is giving it extra extra uh, points in through there as well. Plus we have the benefits from this one. So just taking this through bit by bit. Um, if I click on this one, actually I'll just right click, just make sure that I don't have I don't want really to do the attack yet until I'm actually ready. So with this one here, the um, we can see that it's got 15 strength. It's got no suppression. Okay, so it's and the suppression literally just gets subtracted from whatever the strength is. It just means that it's less effective at fighting. It's got five ammo now that it's surrounded. If it uses its ammo, it can't replenish that at the start of its next turn. If it sort of starts the turn surrounded, and so this one actually for the ammo, um, we can start to whittle it down. Now we can whittle it down a number of different ways, and once we actually get it down to zero, it basically can't fight back, and so at that stage, it's pretty much screwed. And we've surrounded it because it's got no, like we've got a zone of control from this unit into here. We've got a zone of control from this one out into here. So there's no, there's no points back this, that this one can get supplied, supplied with. So what we need to do is we want to suppress it as much as possible to make it easier for our attack. The reason that this guy is doing so well is we actually have the, um, uh, where is it? The, uh, where is it? Military engineer ignores enemy. It, this one ignores the enemy entrenchment. So its accuracy is not affected by enemy's entrenchment level. If there's an engineer next to both attacking friendly unit and its target, this friendly unit also, will also ignore fifty percent of enemy entrenchment. So this one here, if I if I could attack with this one, which we couldn't because we attacked attack the other one, this would also that, that would then ignore 
50% of this entrenchment. So at the moment we're getting like minus 24% base rate from the um, from the entrenchment from from attacks from infantry. It would be minus 12% because this one's next to a pioneer. That's why I wanted to actually upgrade and get myself a second pioneer. They're just so damn useful. But we can still do other things to make this attack much, much more effective. And so what we want to be doing with this one, this would show that if we did attack it, we're going to do 11 points of damage there and take four points of damage ourselves because we're not we're not dealing with it with the actual um, entrenchment. If we went in with this unit, we would lose six of our ten and only destroy three because these would be then fighting inside the um, inside the close support areas. So it's not really going to help us. The ways that we can if, uh, that we can impact this is we can actually drop. Uh, we can use the Heinkel, so we'll use the Heinkel uh, to destroy this one. You'll see there it's going to give three suppression. Now the Stuka will do actual damage, so these uh, these dive bombers will do damage. This one here does suppression damage, but it also does um, uh, damage to the ammo. You'll see there it is, three ammo. So we just wasted three of its ammo by doing that attack. So it's now down to two of five ammo. I hope this makes sense. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of uh, explaining this well enough. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, Belarusia is saying the long-range desert group uh, painted theirs a rose color. Did they really? Didn't realize that. That, that, that was so cool, the stories. That was the start of the SAS was the long-range desert group. Really interesting. That's British forces. But um, now we want to just sort of ease forward a little bit. We're, ultimately, we're going to need to sort of get in, into the vehicles. But a, a reason I wanted to move my tanks out was just so I can move this one up and still just get the attack. So this one is going to do one extra damage, but should also now do suppression damage as well. When we look on the right hand side, we can see that we've already now got three suppression damage. And we've now done even more. We did one damage, so it's now down to 14, but it's now suppressed at seven. You'll see it over in the right hand side here. So it's now, like what's going to happen now, we're still going to only do 11 damage, but they're only going to do one damage back against us. We can still do better, guys. We can still do better. We've got this one as well, which is another, this is another uh, artillery unit. So we can bring this one across as well and just keep on suppressing it with artillery. Here we go, another two suppression, another one, another another destroy that destruction there. Now it's not quite enough to destroy it with this, uh, with this unit. I would like it to destroy it. I don't think there's much else we can really do anyway. So I'll bring this one up. I do get a shot there as well from this uh, from this uh, Storm, Storm Panzer. So we'll take that, see if we can actually get, get even more suppression. You see how the recon is helping even these attacks. The recon units are so, so valuable. This one is now has now been suppressed nine. It's only, it's only fighting back with two effective units. Now it won't do any damage back, and we've almost got it destroyed. Uh, if we go back across, what else have we got? We've got another Stug, haven't we? The Stug 3B, uh, which is another um, artillery unit. Very important to be looking at what the classes are when you're going through different things. Now, this one has to be right next to whatever it is. So uh, unfortunately, I can't quite do what we have to do there. Um, having said that, I can bring it in next to it. I think we'll just now do this attack. Now that the likelihood is, is that we're not going to actually have, suffer any damage. Yep, so we've now taken it, but we haven't gone inside there yet, just yet. Now we've got this one that can come back in. What the little symbols are showing is, is that this, this, this group actually does have a transport. So it's got like an armoured car transport. If I move into here, it will then drop the unit and, uh, and get out of the transports. If I go into here, it's going to stay in the transports, which makes them a little bit more susceptible to counterattacks. But if I do this one, I can't actually attack. If it's just got the circle, I can then actually still do an attack. So we've got the uh, we've still got our Messerschmitts. Now I can kill this thing off with a Messerschmitt. Let's just do that. Good. So we've now destroyed that one. Now the next thing with the Messerschmitts, I can use them for different sorts of things. I can use them to um, to go off and uh, and and scout ahead for me if I wanted to, or I can use them to protect my uh, my aircraft. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to use both Messerschmitts and take. Let's just do this so we can see. The aircraft. I love this. I, this is new. This is new for me. <laughs> Actually, just sorry. I'll get rid of this. So I know that that's annoying for everybody if I leave that one on. Um, there's probably been comments that I've missed. <laughs> uh, that's the sort of thing that you need to you need to scream at me with the at Daz tactic. Turn off the 
the, the overview or whatever the purchase. Yes, we don't need the overview on either. One thing I do like to put on is the uh, is the stats panel. This is really quite useful because it does give information about what each unit will do. So with this one, all I want to do is I just want to come back in and have them next to my my sort of like my vulnerable craft. So I'm just going to move this one across into here, and I'm going to move this measure smith over to here. So what this is now going to do, it's going to give me really nice air support for these. I've only got one air support for this one, plus we did some extra damage in there as well. So um, so I would kill the recon with BF-109. Actually, you're right. You are right. We can use a measure smith for that. Now, I've only got three of these undos. There we go. Actually, we're not going to get the kill. I've already got the protection, so that's actually... A, that. Hopefully will be enough. We're not seeing any other aircraft there. Yep, so we did one damage with the 109. And uh, we've still now got all of our units. So let's just now press tab just to bring it back down to ground level. Now the uh, this one here again, I want to bring this one up and have it sort of ready to go. But it's not going to be able to support. I'm, I'm not going to be able to really have it supporting anything for a little while just yet. Hmm. We've also got the um, the Italian tank, which can't really do much. Move it out to there. Uh, what else have we got? We've got the uh, the third Italian infantry. It it doesn't have actually have any transport. We've got the Bersaglieri. We'll put them on their transports and leave them inside here. So they're actually now we've now taken this one. We get a hundred prestige for taking that particular objective. Now these guys, I want to leave these, the Pioneers, I'm, I'm a bit wary about leaving them out on their own. Now I'm only going to need the Pioneers mainly for Benghazi. So the Australians have got Benghazi. Um, this is pretty cool, isn't it? I didn't realise that they've actually, I didn't, I didn't, hadn't noticed this before. So it's actually, they've even got the, the different allies uh, flags and things in this. It's very cool. Actually, there's the, there we go, the Italians have now grabbed that as well. Uh, so we'll move this one across. We still get the money though. Okay, so we'll leave that one there. Put the bear infantry. Uh, we'll bring this, this one across. Now I want to make sure that they're with that the planes can't do big damage against my units. So I just want to bring these back and then dislodge them so that we've still got the, them available. Uh, they're all okay at the back there. Now we've still got these. So if I just go to the um, if I press the full stop and then sort of start to Move these up now. That's a Panzer II. Uh, the Panzer, the Stug III. I'll be wanting to move this one up. Just say there. Can't use it for anything. Panzer III. I want to move these up as far as they possibly can go. I've still got more of these recons as well, so I can sort of start to leave them out in front. Let's just move that one across that side. Now this one here, I don't get the attack. Actually, we've got a high ground. I can see further from the high ground. Actually, we've gone through a lot of the principles of the game <laughs> this turn, which has been pretty cool. That's the uh, Panzer Jager 1B. That's my um, anti-tank support. That, so that's going to now protect all three of those. And uh, we'll now just pop that one into there. That's just a, not a, 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 a light tank. Okay, so is that everybody? Yes, it is. Okay, we'll end our turn there. Yeah, just trying to do damage. This is good. That's good. I didn't realize that that would actually give me the support, but it did. Yeah, I was a bit worried about leaving my pioneers out here. Um, not a good move. God, there's a lot of new sort of uh, equipment, a lot of new toys. So we've got ourselves an anti-tank, uh, sorry, anti-aircraft unit back through that side. We should be able to do massive damage against that one. Uh, just right-click. Uh, this one here is a uh, is a Vickers uh, light tank, so a Mark uh, Mark Six tank. Um, yep, so it suffered a bit of damage. This Pioneer unit, unfortunately, did take some damage as well. 
Uh, we've got two of the armoured car, which they've now re replenished. But we'll see there that the suppression is, the reason this is a red six is because the suppression basically means it's still only got like one point. And then we've got another Vickers Mark VI there as well. So, okay, this is pretty cool. So what can we do this time? We also have aircraft that have come back through. A, Bl a Blenheim, uh, this is a dive bomber, tactical bomber. Didn't do much damage against my tank underneath there. We did actually have the, um, the support there, though, from the others. And then we've also got Hurricanes. So the Hawker Hurricane has now flown across into here as well. Now, this should only just be... Um, yeah, that's not all that powerful. Now, I do get to do a little bit of damage that side. I'm not going to be able to do anything this way. So what I'll do is I will actually... I'll take the shot now with this. Which gives it a lot more suppression. It's been suppressed at six. So this is mainly what the uh, what this stuff actually does. We're going to have some suppression backing through our Mesher Smiths and things down this way as well. Uh, I think because they did actually use their anti-air against us. Actually, then that's okay. So we can actually go and do pretty strong damage against both of these forces. I've got to think about which one I actually what what I actually use here. Um, now I can go if I if I use them if I bring the um, the Mesher Smith back into this side to then do some of the damage against this one. So if I move that to there, I can then do the damage against that one. Almost get it killed off, but I can then use a dive bomber to kill this one off if I need to, which will then still give me protection. Um, just not sure how many when we're going to start to see there other aircraft coming through. We do have extra extra of these, so maybe we'll, we'll get rid of the, the hurricanes. They're going to be the... We need air supremacy, and this is going to give us air supremacy. Let's just move this one up and around. Okay, we did five damage there. That's great. So it's now down... To, it went back to orange because the ratio... It's still got one more... It's got one fight left in it. <laughs> and uh, I think all we can really do is just use this one here. I think I'll get rid of the, the, uh, the hurricane rather than the, uh, the tactical bomber. That one's gone. Right, so we've now destroyed that one. That's going to give us a bit more air supremacy. We've got the 110 that we can do. Big damage against that one. You can see there, we get this one's giving it protection. So it, it's going to be hard to fight against that one there. But if I go this side, I'm going to end up, if I just press the tab so we can see the aircraft, if I go to this one, I do get the protection there. So I think I'll just take that one for now. Although, what will the Stuka give me? I love these little changes. It's it's really, really good. Do five there, four there. Stuka will then be unprotected. I think I'll use the Stuka. Actually, what's their... What's their um, what have they got? It's Grand Defense of seven... Air defense of three. This one's got an air defense of seven. So this one is the better one to use. This is a Messerschmitt 110. So it can defend itself uh, to fight a bomber, basically. So we can actually look after itself. So we can go off this side. We're getting the recon uh, extras through there anyway. So that's another three damage done to that one. And then we can use the... Um, the, the, uh, the the dive bomber, the Stuka, uh, which doesn't have very very good um, air defense, and we can then make use of this Messerschmitt to then escort this one and still do good damage there. I hope that makes sense. So I'm using this one to protect that. This one doesn't need the protection. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. Um, you could kill the Blenheim. Uh, with, I could have killed it with that, actually, couldn't I? I'm not going to undo two. I'm not going to. I've only got three undos for the whole turn, so I won't do that. But you're right. I could have. I could have actually done that as well. It's going to cost them a lot of points to bring this one back to health, though, and it really wasn't that effective. I do have air supremacy, so I'm not going. To, I'm not too worried. I'm going to, I'm going to go after the ground units. Uh, just tab back in again to uh, look at the actual ground forces. We still actually have this, uh, like our hind core. Um which we don't know what we want to use that for just yet. So I'm not going to send it anywhere just yet. Just right-click. It's hard to get used to using the right-click rather than the left-click. 
Okay, so we've now done that one. That's been quite effective. We've still got, now got all of our armor. We want, to be, we want to make this as effective as we possibly can. We've got no anti-tank anywhere. So um, we've taken damage this side. I want to keep these... I want elite replacements coming back into these. I want to keep these at full strength all the time. So uh, because I'm going to be using them against, uh, against uh, areas like this. Now, I can't do much with that. Got our Stug. Um, this one here, we're going to get the recon advantages anyway, coming back through. Got the Panzer II, which will do reasonable damage against the other light. I can kill that off with this as well. You see how we've been blocked off? If I if I do that, I'm going to be able to then get overrun, even with just something as light as just a Panzer II. <laughs> Let's just do it. Let's do it. Bang, overrun. That gives me another another attack. I can then kill this one off using the Panzer II. Now that gets that gets my light tank uh, out of the action. Now we've still got more overruns. If there was a unit around it that could, it could attack, it would then get the other attack in there. So we've now got rid of the two Vickers. Oh, hang on, we haven't got rid of this Vickers yet. But we've got our big Panzer III's ready to go. We've got a Panzer IV in through here, which I'll use more effectively against this one here anyway. So um, I want to get the overrun through this one, though. Now, we already have the recon next to it. We're not going to get the benefit of having the, uh, the engineer next to it. But I do get five there. I don't really want to end up in this one. Um, actually, that is just desert, it's saying underneath there. So hang on, if I just right click, what is that? Oh, it's a village. The village has got things like it's got a minor road running through it, but it's also close terrain. In close terrain, infantry units and other units with close combat trait shoot against the opponent's uh, close defence rating, which is usually much lower than the ground defence. This makes infantry extremely dangerous in close terrain. It doesn't make tanks <laughs> all that good in there, unfortunately. I would like to destroy this. I want to destroy this. Um, I want to keep this recon where that is. I can't move this one out of the way anymore. And really, we've got these sorts of units. I'll, I'll just bring them up and then we'll do some more suppression. Okay, we've got a bit more suppression there. So it's not going to fight back. It's not going to fight back effectively anyway. So we don't really need to worry too much about that one. This Panzer did take some damage. Um... Once I get rid of this guy, I'm sort of through with all the others anyway. Now the anti-tank, actually I can do that. It's going to do a little bit of damage back, but I'm happy enough with that. I'm sort of, I can go that way. Panzer three. Let's, uh, let's move that one. Let's move this one up to here. Actually that one can move all the way in. This is my anti-tank unit. Let's just do it there. This one's now encircled. Again, with the ammo, it's um, it's got four or five ammo at the moment. Now I can... No, I still need to get rid of that one before I can use the other other stuff. Yeah, we lost one there. Oh, this is good. This has now come back in. I'm going to get an overrun here. So I've got a mass attack going in from all the other different units around it. And, and so that's going to make this thing absolutely uh, not be able to do anything at all. So we now have Overrun using this Panzer III. I can now bring it up and just sort of start to encircle this one as well. And it's moved down as well. Now I can get this one killed off. I don't really want to... I want to use the tanks with Overrun if I can. So we'll just move that one into there. So we now got overrun, which gives me another another turn. You know, I'm just going to right click and just have a bit of a look to see what this is. This is not close terrain. That one will be. That will be. That will have close terrain in through there. The mountains will also be close terrain. So this is why I wanted uh, I wanted a lot of infantry to take Benghazi and to go through the top, while my armored forces go through the uh, through the through the desert. Um, now that one can move up, and we can claim that using our Italian allies again. Actually, that's... Spursa Glary does actually have... It does have uh, other things. Um, 
I don't really want it to go too far up. I might just get it so that it, we can start to sort of mask the Australians and British that will be coming from the north. This is actually a throwaway group. Like we can actually sort of use this one uh, just to sort of at, like to soften the blow. And we've got the other pioneer unit back and through here. I'll move that one. There's a swamp there. No one's going to want to fight from the swamp. We do want these these pioneers uh, out and about. Uh, now the next thing we need is still at the, um, the the bomber there. I want to see what's around. Okay, so we're seeing in through this side. We've got uh, the Seventh Australian Infantry, the First Australian Heavy Weapons Infantry, back over these sides, and they're dug in fairly effectively over here. And there's also a, a quarter pounder. So the quarter pounder is going to be a bit of a problem for us because it's going to actually mean that we it's going to give them good defense when we start to attack and assault Benghazi. There's uh, in the actual desert map, it was a road that ran through the middle here, but it's not on this map. <laughs> they didn't give us that one. So um, yeah, there was a there was a dirt track that they that both sides used in the actual desert campaign across this um, across this ridge line. You can sort of see it there. It's modeled. I guess it's modeled because it's still it's just mountains. Well, these are hills. And then these are mountains, which are sort of would be impassable for some troops, but we could still get through the hills okay-ish, I guess. So if we have a look at this, um, which we can't use that one, we can slowly get through the hills here if we if we absolutely had to, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be ideal. Um, now the recon, I'm going to move the recon back out this side. We should be able to now sort of rattle through the desert fairly effectively. This one can't, can't be seen except by, by ground troops. So I'm going to now move this one across. What have we got? We've got cruiser tanks. So this is the um, the British mediums or heavies tanks. I can't remember what they actually were. If we have a look at this. Uh, what's it got? What's it got? What's it got? Soft attack is eight. Hard attack is okay. This is an anti-tank tank. So this is actually going to be um, yeah, fairly, uh, fairly, fairly difficult for us to sort of uh, take on. It's going to be okay. There'll be a few of these. Yep, there's another one back there. We're on high ground. We're getting better view. So I'm, I'm now getting a better vision. This is the special one that we had that can't be seen by the other. So we won't be targeted unless they come into the desert. So I can use that one effectively just to sort of uh, at least get everything prepared. Now we do actually have um, underground here. I can actually now I can give this one the elite replacement or I can move it forward. Already moved up with the Panzer II. Still got the Panzer III back this side as well. Let's just go and sit back in there. The anti-tank I've already moved, so I can't put that in behind us to mask the uh, the cruisers that will be coming in. I think they'll still be piecemeal. Is this a new one? I didn't see this one before. This is um, a light tank. We can throw that one away. Actually, it's very effective against um, against uh, infantry. Very effective. Okay, so we'll use that one as a uh, as an anti-infantry uh, thing. We'll move this one up <clears throat> just into there. Again, I just want to make sure that these are in position where they can at least do some protection. So I want mainly I want to use these to help soften the blows coming back up this side. We've got our second grenadier. I'll move him out into the desert. The uh, the infantry. Without knowing whether they're going to have other bombers and things come in, I don't know whether to. Um, I think I'd be safe enough to bring that up into there and leave it actually inside. It's uh, it's, oh, it's only got an opal blitz. No, look, I'll just I'll get out of the truck. Otherwise, it'll be absolutely decimated. This guy's going to be very, very slow moving back up through the desert. We get our protection back in through here again. And we still have this. Yep, so we can start to um, start to soften the attacks in through here. This one's dug in. 
until we actually get these surrounded, there's going to be a problem. <clears throat> I think I'll, I'll send this one off. Um, let's just reduce the uh, the entrenchment. Just start to sort of whittle that one down. So we got rid of two of the entrenchment on the uh, Australian the first Australian heavy infantry heavy heavy weapons. Sorry. Okay. So next next we have this uh, our special tank. I think what I'll do is I will actually just go and get the elite replacements for that one, um, just to get it back up to up to full strength. And the twelfth Panzer four. Yeah, I don't really want to leave it out. It's got good ground defence. I'll, I'll just leave it in front of this. Stug. Bring that one up. That way we can sort of start to at least uh, whittle away at these forces with these in the coming rounds. Okay, everything is now moved, so that's all we need to do there. We don't have anything else we can really do. Lend our turn. I say, Berserkleria attacking the infantry. Yeah, that one. Oh, how did that one see us? Hang on, that's that shouldn't happen. Ooh, there's even more. Okay, well, something is wrong here, guys. Something is wrong. This one should not be seen from the others. Camouflage can only be detected by recons or adjacent ground units. There's no other recon. There was no recons nearby. So yeah, okay. That looks like that's not working. Um, yeah, they've brought in another lot of hurricanes. So they've got a second group of hurricanes. Yeah, where can we get to? What's our limits? That is our limits. Okay, so we're right at the edge. We need to start to bring forces back across to here. And there's another group of them as well, Spitfires. Okay, so, um, yeah, air supremacy is going to be not easy here, I don't think. Now, where's the other air airfields? They've got an airfield way back over here. And at Tobruk, we've got another airfield there as well. That's what we're going to have to try to aim for, is to get those. Now I can bring these back in. Uh, we've also got this one here, which can't really do anything. I'm not going to be able to affect this. So I'm better off to br bring this one, not up just yet, but I'll bring that up afterwards. In the meantime, um, that one also can't quite get where it needs to needs to go. I'm going to need to take this airfield. It's too far back. This one here can just get to it. Um, okay, well, I've got nothing else I can really do other than bring a recon unit back. Let's just bring that one underneath. Give me the still, I'm still on the high ground there. All right, that's good. If you're getting that, that extra um, Mesher Smith, we'll pay dividends, I think. Supremacy would be quite important. Gee, that was lucky. And we still have um, we still have this guy, which can actually finish that one off. I'm not going to do enough damage on the ground. This one does have extra range as well. I think it's best to get rid of these. That 
did take some damage last time. Probably shouldn't have done that. Okay, the Stukas. Love these things. They do big damage. Now, now we need to go and make sure that we can get, that we can now sort of deal with. Oh, hang on, Control Z. <laughs> um, I need to get this one into a position where we can then start to do other damage. So let's just move this one down in around. It's now encircled. Uh, it's got five. Still got five of six ammunition left. We've still got other tanks back up through here that we'll have to deal with as well. Uh, in through this side, we've then got the, um, the Stuka. We'll now do, actually, no, it's still the same damage. We do need to kill this one off. Now, next to this one, I'm going to get a little bit of extra support, so that will work out fairly well. And then we have, I can do the overrun using these. I've got mass attack, I've got recon. Any more? No, I've got no more recon with that one. Okay, so we're going to be wanting to do a mass attack through here. So we've now got overrun, which means I can now start to come back in behind the other tanks. I've got recon support there, which is why I'm getting four damage against that one, but only three against this one. So I'm going to be needing to bring this one back down for when we attack this, and it would be best to do this attack probably now, I think. Put this one here, which can also just get ready. Um, we can that one get to. I can get that one in the middle there as well and do good damage against the, the one at the top. Actually, I can get to there. Let's take the airfield with this as well. Then we can do the mass attack this side. It's still, I need to suppress it a little bit more. To three, I can get onto that hill. It's now moving back. Now it's in close. It's it's now actually really susceptible to um, attacks from uh, infantry because it's now gone into a close terrain. I want to bring this one forward. Just to uh, that encircles that one, but it also will give me other bonuses. I can now do four damage there, nothing coming back the other way. It's now moved off. I didn't get the, I didn't get the overrun, of course. But now I can get an over. Actually, no, I can't get an overrun there either. Let's move this one around. Now we've got overrun there, so I've got another attack with this one. Overrun is so damn useful. We lost one. It's still alive. Now, we don't want to go into here. Um, I can bounce him with this one if I had to. In fact, I can do that. I can just do the... Actually, no, we're going to do the attack. That's going to be the end of it. So I don't want to do that just yet. Can't quite get the attack in with this one. That would be cool if we could. Now, this one's already had one overrun. It might just... Um, I, actually, maybe it hasn't. Let's just get elite replacements for that one. Just get them, on, them um, sort of uh, going forward. Um, Panzer three. Now it overrun, but nothing to use it, use it against. So we got rid of the tank forces. I can't, actually I can upgrade this one. Look, in that case, okay, if I move, I can't. Let's just get them back to full strength. Actually, even this one I can do. It doesn't make sense because I've been moving them around. Maybe they've changed the rules. I can't do that one. <laughs> Oh well, this one here I can, but then I can't move it up. If I move this one into here, yeah, now I can't. Okay, I'm not sure why some some can and some can't. That's um, not understanding that one. Now we're going to need to uh, 
Move these up. This is pioneers. I want the I don't want the pioneers to be attacked just yet. Move that one up to there. Just get these ready. Doug, uh, we can move that one across this way as well. It's just it's any artillery, so it's, it can't actually fire back. That one doesn't get a shot. That one does get a shot. Not yet, anyway. Uh, we've got the other pioneer unit now. There will be other areas back over here that we probably need to get pioneers for, but this one should be able to smash its way through Benghazi. Um, I think I'll still move it out this side. I'll keep most of my most of my forces coming back up this way anyway. The second grenadier is um, if they fire against me, that probably wouldn't be a bad thing. So I'll just leave him where he is. He can be a bit of a target. March the, um, the Italian infantry back up the line. Just move this one across into uh, where can we move? I'm guessing the attacks will come in with the with the aircraft. All right, that gives us good protection in the middle there. So we've still got these guys which can attack if they wanted to, but you'll see there they've got they've got support coming back from the. Um, from the artillery back in through there. So I don't want to do anything with that one. I'm just going to put that one to sleep. Just, I'll just go Z. Now this guy here, this is really quite a, a pretty cool little tank. Like it's got, that's really high. That's really high attack values. The L3s. I didn't rate it all that highly, but it's uh, very, very, very good. Okay, so we've now got the, um, the BF-109s. I'm going to move them across uh, to the airfield. So we just captured over here. So we'll go and rebase. That way we can at least extend out a little bit further the next turn. And we've still got the uh, the Heinkel. Which can still do damage that side. Trying to get this entrenchment down as low as we possibly can get it. Okay, so we're not we don't have it surrounded, so we can't actually do anything with the surrounding just yet. Um, okay, so we'll just go next. Um, yeah, that's all we can do. Okay, we'll end our turn there. Here they come. Wow, now that suppressed it dramatically, which really saved our bacon there. Took a lot of damage there with the Stug. And if there's more forces coming, a bit of suppression back out through there. Yeah, the, me the mechanics in this game are really incredibly good. Uh, like they really are in great because um, it makes it uh, like it's simple enough to play instinctively, but but very detailed as well. Now, if I go there, I'm not going to not going to quite get what I need. Um, that may surround it though, although I'm going to be wanting to do this a different way, I think. We have the Pioneer, which that one's now entrenched at six again. The Heinkel can't rebase to there. We need a, we need a big airfield to, um, to get the Heinkel in, into where it needs to be. One's got no entrenchment. This one's still has got entrenchment. Even this quarter pounder has um, got entrenchment as well. A quarter pounder, the twenty-five pounder. <laughs> I'm thinking Hungry Jacks or uh, what is it? The um, I forget what Hungry Jacks is called overseas in Australia. It's Hungry Jacks. Everywhere else it's Burger King. That's right. That's what it is. Just want to see if I can dislodge this. 
We've got our pioneers now ready to come through. We can do pretty good damage there against that, even with that one just where that is. So we'll just get that one ready for the attack. This one's ready to assault it as well. Now, the first attack is going to then draw the, the wrath of this guy over here, which is why I'm sort of thinking I would like it to actually do its move, but this one is now too weak. I've got nothing I can really get across the top. Um, Stug. You know, I might still move it around. It only, should only do suppression against each other. Yeah, it still protects it. Didn't help much. I think with the port, they don't have... Um, look, there's no, there's no real issue. Now, if I go this way... You know, I think I might actually do this one. We do get a mass attack. I'll use it now. I'm trying to draw the like the the attention. That was yeah. We, oh, we lost four yeah with that one. We got pretty high suppression initially. It did come back in. We should be able to start to just. Oh no, it's still going to be able to support everything. Now it's still got three three ammo left. Okay, I'm just going to have to go for it. There's nothing I can really do about it. I'm going to use this one in behind everything any, anyway, so we'll move that one up into there. Uh, we do actually have this, which I probably should be using a bit more effectively. Three, one there. I'll just go three this side. This one's got six suppression. It's got three suppression at the moment. Okay, five suppression. We're going to do a lot of damage there. Probably be able to dislodge even both of these. Okay, now it's got uh, it's down to twelve suppression. So it can only fire back at three, but we've still got this one coming back in this side. Okay, let's go in with the engineer. Okay, so we did dislodge it. And it's going to do suppression back. This one's now encircled back over here. Thing I can bring it bring up actually what I do have is uh, dive bombers is our Stuka oh, it doesn't quite reach you can't get there okay we need to rebase one thing it can get there is our long-range um, uh, BF 110 it'll do two damage Now we've got the, um, this guy here is almost dead. I've still got another Mesha Smith back this side. I can use that to kill that one off, but I prefer to use it um, uh, later on. Let's just, um, let's just right click to start with. I'm going to finish it off with this one, I think. I can't use that, can I? Oh, yes, I can. I can use that, and I can st still then move it across as well. Great. Great. Okay, so um, we still got to move. Because we didn't move it, we can still move it even after we shoot. Okay, so the 88 is now moving towards uh, McKilly and towards Tobruk. To uh, everything else is pretty good there. We've got this um, this Messerschmitt can now rebase as well. 
All right, so we've now got most of our forces except for this one. I can use this one as a um, as a scout if I wanted to. I'll uh, leave it where that is just for now. That's uh, yeah, Great Britain engineers. They look like they were heavies. So we've got engineers back through there. Now that is a hill, I think. That's just desert. Yeah, it's hills around there, but that's actually just desert in there. It's all just desert. I'll just move it up a little bit. Okay, there's more coming. Okay, so I'll just move them back. And oh, there's more up this way as well. Okay, we're now starting to see other units. Now we're not going to do hardly any damage against these. Um, I don't think even think I need to protect that one actually. I think we're pretty good. Although if I just move to there, I can just protect both of those just using this Messerschmitt. These are both rebased so they can protect each other. This thing's now out in advance of everything else as well. So there's nothing else left back there. Okay, so let's just go through the leftover units. We've got these guys which we're going to move across the top. We've got our pioneer units which will get ready to... Um, to go forward. Need our tanks out in the open. Just get ready for the uh, for the assault. You can be uh, replenished. Just keep them at fighting fit. I'm probably wasting time by doing that. But I think I've got enough enough strength there anyway. Okay, so what else have we got? Uh, infantry back over this side. We can't move in though. Okay, well, next turn we should be able to wipe these guys out. Unfortunately, these guys are going to be still fairly strong. So, even though we're in circle, this is all it's going to do is impact the ammo that we actually have. All right, so that's all we can do that turn. Hi, Beryl, and anybody else that's joined us, welcome to the stream. Now, they had an advantage in the high ground. Okay, it looks like we've wiped out the... I oh know that's uh, another of the Spitfires. Okay, we can now get that Spitfire. We've still got a few planes left of over th this side. Let's move you... We'll rebase this one now back up to the middle. And Blenheim. This has been quite a useful aircraft, actually. It's not the Blenheim, sorry, the, um, the Messerschmitt 110. It's been really quite useful in what it can actually do. They've, okay, they've just replaced all of their forces back this side. <laughs> so we're now, we're now sort of back at square one through there. So they've, they've uh, replaced those. Uh, this one here, I might just I might get the elite replacements for that one at this, at this stage. We are going to be wanting to keep on destroying this group. Now, they've only entrenched at two at this at this stage. But that's about all we can really reach until we actually sort of get them everything else across. So let's just go back in and um, sort of carpet bomb the port, port of Benghazi. Now, this is our, our grenadiers are in through this side. I can, I can pretty much destroy that using these guys. Deal with this as well. 
Can get much here. Surrendered. We should have overrun there. No, it doesn't look like we do. What I might do is I might just move these this L3 down. This is a little flame tank. Very cool. Very cool tank. Let's just move it up. Start to capture some of this territory. This one here that was defending the pass has now moved down this side so I've got a, a, I should have a little bit more of a run across the top here now than what we had what we thought we'd actually end up having um, I can do most of the damage there I've got mass attack coming back in I can actually use this force to do some some damage here anyway let's just move this one across just to help with these other attacks. Now that should surrender. No, oh, went off that way. Um, I'll be wanting to use... I've got two forces here. Mass attacks going in there. We'll do that. So just use that. Oh, that's surrendered as well. That's great. Okay, that's cool. Now, I will want this air airfield. I don't have to get it straight away. Can't do the damage there just yet. Okay, okay, okay. Um... I don't really want anything behind me. One can move off. I don't get the attack. I've already I've already done an attack with it. Let's just capture the airfield. Get that one now. Get the replacements on that one. And move in. Now this one here should be a um, we should be able to capture that. No, it's not capturable. Okay, that's all right. I thought I thought it would have been. Now I've gone to the hill here. That gives me high ground, which gives me extra attack range for my artillery, which means I can then target this one. Okay, so that suppressed it quite strongly. And we can then, this one will be, I think, in closed area, close terrain. It's uh, forced, uh, went, used forced march. Plus one move points, cooldown three turns. Uh, high ground, so the, as, as uh, received plus one spotting. Range units also get uh, plus one range. Melee units get plus 10% accuracy when attacked. From, yeah, okay. It's not close. Where is the hills? It is the hills, isn't it, that it's on? Or is it close? Oh, it is close to rain. Okay, so to dislodge these guys, I'm going to have to use infantry. Uh, are they on hills? No, they're just in the desert. The Raj infantry, so that's the Indians coming back across the other side there. Uh, now, with the other aircraft that we have, I've got two that I can use. I've got a... Um, where was that other... There it is. There it is. Up, 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 up. Control Z. I keep on doing that. I might have to go back to Unlimited. It, just, it hasn't been too bad. So I want to just make sure that I soften this one up. So it did force suppression. That's going to, that's going to save the bacon for our Mesher Smiths. BF-109 can just sort of come through. That's good. We did four damage there. It's down to five now. We've got this guy as well. Keep these supporting each other. It's down to two. There's nothing else I can really use here. 
I've got the Messerschmitt that I can still actually use against something. Actually, I can do three damage there, which will still give me support from that Messerschmitt. No one's going to attack, but it's got nothing left. Nothing left, so it's uh, basically sort of, uh, they can't really do anything. This one just rebased that turn. Can't do anything else with that one. Now, we need to sort of start the race across the desert here. I'm wanting to use my recon forces. It's going to be too dangerous to uh, to attack some of the others. I'm just going to get elite replacements there. This one's out in the open, which means that my tanks can actually do big damage here. Hmm. Um, I'll use one of these because there will be forces back in there, I would think. I might even use this one just to come back up. Yep, so we've got uh, Raj uh, Heavy Weapons Infantry back in through there as well. And we've got um, artillery at the back there. Circled. Getting the extra attack now because of the other one. And there's anti tank there. Got overrun, so I can keep on moving if I wanted to. I'll come back to that one. These are sort of dug in a little bit and uh, they're going to be a little bit too difficult for us. And while I'm, I can't attack this one, I can still move up if I wanted to, just so that we've actually got um, ready for the next assault, which I think I'll do. It's not going to help me there. Yeah, where's our anti-tank? Oh, it can't quite get there, actually. I'm going to move both of them back in that case. We'll start with this one. Move it up. Just get them ready. Okay, next. Definitely not going to attack with that one. Pins are four. I can't really move that one much. One here can I'll just move that one back in and move this one across just to, so we get the support support of the anti tank. Um, yeah, it's gonna be two all there. Just move it down into the desert. It'll be interesting to see what this one does. The, um, the the anti air. Okay, that's everyone moved. Lend our turn. We've only got twenty minutes left. Wow, this has gone really fast. Um, if you guys have any questions, please sing out. And I'll try to answer anything I can. More arm. This, is where, this is what I wanted. I wanted the anti-tanks to kick in first. I want the protections. I'm glad I did this. Wow, I'm so glad I did this. That saved my bacon doing those those uh, those two. You know, that's hopefully yeah, we're okay there. These are quite survivable, the recon units. Okay, we did a massive, massive job there. Just by that one little move of bringing up this anti-tank. And, uh, and not extending these out beyond where they could get the support has paid massive dividends. 
because he'd been able to get the uh, initial attacks in to uh, do the, the damage against the cruisers. There's no Matildas, actually. I thought we'd see Matildas at this stage, but we're not seeing them. Um, oh, do I risk it? <laughs> I don't, think, don't know if I will get an ambush otherwise. So we've got all of those done. This guy can... Uh, I might even move this one across to, to take on the, the, the fellow in the in the middle there. We're just going to go and get uh, elite replacements there. Elite replacements there. And the Bersaglieri. I do want to start to position my forces. I, I'll still just get the elites. This one's ready to go, so we'll just move him across, across the middle here. Not seeing anything. them together. There's nothing else really coming. Let's just move this one up. Oh, they're, they're back here. Okay, that's the third Australian infantry. Um, it's no, I don't really want to be in the close, close terrain. I'm sort of happy enough to be back out this side. Okay, so that's those. Then back over this area. I can do big damage back there, but I, but really I want to keep the attack going. I can sort of, I can mask this force. I can do other things with this. We have suppressed it dramatically. So we've got three attack left. Uh, now, our planes. These have now all been reset up. There's nothing else coming back in, so we'll just do a rebase. So we'll rebase these back out into here. Have to be a little bit careful that this guy doesn't do another forced march and sort of come back down and start to take what I've got. You know, maybe it would be safer to... Um, Actually, no, I do need to, I need to crack through this. I need to crack through there. Okay, then we've got this guy as well, which can just lay more suppression. I think I'm going to be better off uh, bringing this one up. Rebase. I can't rebase the small airfields. I can only re rebase the big air airfields with the Heinkels. So that will end up in there. Okay, across to this side. So really, I'm going to need this one to help with the attack on on McKilly. But I also really need to get rid of this guy. It's not going to help having anything other than this fellow go in. I can't attack this turn. I mean, we can get rid of these guys. It's going to give me overruns with both of these. which will then open up this as well. I can then start to sort of do more damage. So the recon's giving me a bit of extra support. Another overrun. Gives me another attack against this guy. So we did, did good damage there. The overruns are just so, so good. <laughs> As you can see, it works really effectively. Actually, one thing I can do is I could use this one. I might even use this one just to, um, to start to cause issues down this side. There we go. He's, he's made it back onto the, onto the mountains. Now, he may go back across this other side, so we'll have to bring up my, my infantry just to sort of keep that under control. Let's move this one back across this side. Um, still at this one as well. This one here, we want to get that one back up to full strength. No, we didn't quite get what we needed. So I've got to overrun. Take that, get the um, the money. Oops, control Z. Move that one forward. Move that one into there. Again, just to protect those units. You saw how powerful that was. Um, 
Okay, so what else have we got? We've got that one there, got that one there. Okay, they're all done. They're all done. The Panzer II, uh, which isn't going to be able to be all that effective against any of those. So I'll leave it down here as well. I'll just leave it out in the open a little bit. There's a bit of a target. Move that one up. I just want to keep it. I don't want to keep it on the actual vehicles just yet. Move that one through to help with these assaults. If there are aircraft, this is where it's all going to be. Just keep them up. BF-109, still doing more damage, I can harass that, can't really do anything else down that way. Okay, that's fine. Just get them healed up. Oh, the Stuka, I should have used the Stuka against those. Hopefully, there's no other aircraft. <laughs> that would not be good. Actually, I don't think. Yeah, no, I can't use those anymore. Okay, I've still got this guy though. No, he can't use be used either. All right, that's fine. Okay, that's the end of the turn. We've only got 15 minutes, guys. So um, here we go. They came back this way. Yeah, they will do damage there. Now they're attacking out into the open, which does give me a slight advantage. I can't attack into there though, so that is uh, they've done a good job of getting that one. So this is the Spitfires. That should be the end of their um, of what of their forces here. Now I don't get that one. Can't do the attack back that that side. I can't. By the way, I can switch these down into anti-tank mode if I wanted to as well. So uh, I can go from uh, from from flak to anti-tank. And uh, that, like, depending on who I'm up against and, and the and what's actually going on and what I know about the the terrain, that could be quite a useful, useful thing to do as well with those 88s. Uh, okay, so where's our where's our Spitfires? Fires down. Right, this one has now been replenished completely. Need to get these forces across. There's a ridge line at the back there. Interesting, I didn't know I could get onto the mountains. Mask that one. Okay, so uh, the Italian infantry will bring that one across as well. Move them back. And I'll start to drop these as well. So we've got. Um, I can soften this one up. Which way should we go? We should be able to now sort of smash our way through the back here. 
this one, I just don't have enough infantry. I knew I needed to get more infantry at the start. <laughs> it would have been just one more infantry would have would have made a, a big, big difference. I'll leave that until we know what we're going to be attacking. Alright, so we we know that there's going to be enemies, but oh there's no enemies in here. We've got just uh, Daimler Dingoes, just Australian armored cars back up that side. What are you doing three? This thing over here is is protecting it. It's quite quite a strong little combo that they have in here. Get it some, we just get some damage done. Both of those. A little bit of damage come back this way. Now, um, that means that this one can't really support the others all that effectively, which means that we should get a reasonable attack this side. Let's bring up a um, one of the armoured cars. Oh, I can't bring it in. Don't have enough more enough movement. Those. There's going to be more forces back down this side around uh, Tobruk as well. So cracking into Tobruk is going to be a bit difficult. It just only depends too. It's not much more than just an armored car. Can't really get anywhere with that one. Might need, might need to leave McKilly for some of the others. Oops. Let's move this one up. Have an attack. Um, okay, Stuka time. Right, so we'll go with that one there. Um, that one's been destroyed. Got the um, this one as well. And we have some one more 109 as well. Can't really do anything there. Let's just use the um, just press tab just to get the the air field the, like the air, air attack side, so we can see things a bit more clearly. Now we've taken two ammo from that one. It's down to one ammo. Jeez, if I push it now, actually no, I've only got the one attack, so it's not really worth doing anything just yet. Let's press tab again. Let's put that one up. Okay. And I just want to give this one some air support. Right, so we're down to five minutes. Um, need our turn. See what they throw at us. 
We're not gonna unfortunately we're not gonna get this thing finished. Damn it. Oh, they went that way. Okay, that's alright. That's okay, that's okay. So they've gone back inside. Luckily they didn't attack this one here, the infantry. Still going to be a fair bit. Now we've got a, um, a pioneer unit which will bypass any of what they've got dug in. This one here, I'm just going to move this one back but still attack with it. Now we've got the Bersiglary as well. The pioneer unit I wanted to use back up this way. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That wasn't a good move. I'm rushing now. Because <laughs> I want to see if I can actually do this within the time time frame. Um, move that one across to there. I'm not, I'm not, I think I'll get to the brook. I won't get to the brook in time. Move that one there. Take that one. Launch that one across. Now I'll be wanting to attack into here. That one's down. This one's almost. We've almost got this. Take, it's going to take hardly anything to uh, dislodge it now. Um, and the three. I'm not going to quite get the overrun. So we've now captured that. kill it off. That won't kill it off either. Okay, I'm going to have to use a plane to do this. And we need a uh, Panzer three to um, to swing back up this side. Do the damage against this guy. <clears throat> there we go, it's surrendered. We don't get the overrun though. Take that airfield, and we can now start to see the uh, the fortification at Tobruk. But we won't get time for that, unfortunately. So um, we'll just move. Every we'll get everyone ready for the assault. So it's nice not having to worry about your forces um, deciding not to have any equipment, <laughs> like or any uh, ammo, which is what was happening last time, which was uh, quite painful. Um, now we've got the, that one can only just make it. What I'll do is I'll rebase everyone across to here now. I forget the name of these little towns. Can't quite reach there either. So they've still got one airfield, uh, which is over and through this side, which we can't see just yet. Okay, this one's coming back down. Ready. I 
looking at the airfield itself. What I might do is I might just move this one down and actually that's anti tank there anyway. I just don't think we're going to have any air aircraft. Actually, I can't change it to anti tank mode. Everything else has moved. All right, well, we're right on the end of this turn and we're right at the end of this session. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the stream, guys. Very impressive game. It's a, sort of like it's a fairly light war game, like a one that you can sort of get into very, very easily. It's a great, great game. I see this. I think this game is just going to get better and better, particularly that the AI is um, is actually uh, coded to respond randomly rather than to just be scripted. Yeah, so there's a lot to like about this game. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.